God. Symbolic of what we are doing with our hearts. 
God, we lift up our hearts to you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Search our hearts, God. If there's anything not like you, anything in our heart that doesn't make you smile, God, take it out, O oh God. Take it out, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And take the taste for it, O oh God, out of our mouth, O oh God. Take it off of our lips, O oh God. Our desire, O oh God, is to feed you, O oh God. Have your way in this place, O oh God. Have your way in this service, O oh God. Have your way in praise and worship, O oh God. Have your way in the offering, O oh God. We don't care how you do it, O oh God, but do it on us, O oh God. Do it in this place, God. Do it in us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit speak through this place, God. Let your spirit speak through us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, fill us with your spirit, God. Fill us again, God. In the name of Jesus, we need your spirit, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, we need you to transform our minds, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, too much of our fleshly thinking, O oh God. We need to have your spirit, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, you said, God, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, O oh God. We need your mind, God. In the name of Jesus, bind us together in unity, O oh God. One voice, O oh God. One purpose, O oh God. And one praise, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, look on our pastor, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, turn the word over his belly, O oh God. Speak to him, O oh God. Give him clarity of thought, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And prepare our hearts, O oh God, to receive your word, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Let it manifest, O oh God, in us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we will give you all the praise and all the glory in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Give him a good praise. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if he's great, give him a better one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody else serve a great God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and what? Bless his name. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Serve a great God. We have the scripture reading by our very own brother, Brother Shelton. If you come at this time, amen, and give us what God has to say. trouble, we shall hide in his pavilion. In 
in the secret place of his tabernacle. Yeah. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Yes. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice of joy in his tabernacle. I will say, yes, I will say, praise to the Lord. That was Psalm 27, 1 through 6. Our pastor went through the whole thing, but that just touches my soul just to give him to be here in his yeah. tabernacle. Yeah. To give him praise each and every day. Yeah. It's special to be with all these ones. Each and every day that we wake up to give thanks to the Lord is so special. Yeah. So just please remember that it's, it's a blessing each and every day. See another day to see another birthday. Right. Well, choir is the time. <laughs> As Sister Teresa comes, and Sister Teresa comes, we may not know our parts, but we know something. Amen. Amen. We're going to smile and sing together because we're singing to whom? Amen, amen, amen. We have a beautiful sister coming and help us and usher in. Amen, amen. amen. And she can sing. So we just be disguised by some of this. I'm going to turn the mic up so she won't have to hear all of us. <laughs> I love seeing all my sisters and brothers. Yes. It is a blessing to see you and not view you. Amen. And I pray all the time that God shields us in here, the members of peace of faith yeah. from this COVID and whatever, that it does not take us out of here. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We can never repay him, but we got praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you think your little kid is doing something this morning, I promise you it ain't enough. It ain't enough. But he'll take the hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We think he owes us something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name, God. We owe you, Lord. Hallelujah. We owe you the glory and the honor, Jesus. We owe you all the praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus is so good. Hallelujah. You're so awesome, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You will provide the fire. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'll provide the sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. You will provide the spirit. Fill me up, fill me up, yeah. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing and what you've already done. Now fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Some of us on empty. Some of us on half full. Some of us right at the rim. But we want to overflow. So some of us in here may need more than another. But we all want to be by here what we need. Thank you, Lord. Let your word manifest out of my mouth. And let your people hear when thus says the Lord. Let them receive all that you have for them. Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Amen. Fill me up until I overflow. How powerful is that statement? But the one thing that we have to understand is. God got to fill something up for you to have the overflow. So whatever he needs to fill up, you need to bring with you. So whatever you need in your cup, I hope that you bring your cup. Just don't bring your mind. Bring what you need to get overflow. Put it before the altar. And let God do what he's going to do. God is very intentional. As we always say, with everything that he does and everything that he says. The song starts off, you provide something. That's good. You provide something. Yeah. And I'll give you something. That's good. If you provide something. I will give you something. Mm. I heard Pastor Katrina in the back and, and she, as she was praying and she said, all I want is for you to move. All I want is for God to move. But I got to provide him with something. I got to let him know. I got to speak. Show. He will fill you up if you provide the cup. A lot of times we seek opportunity, but we don't come with the right mindset for opportunity. Yes. God led me to this scripture, but this we're going to be reading from 2 Kings 13. And we'll be reading from 14 through 19. But while you get that, I want to talk to you about some things that God has put before us. It's like the appetizer before the dinner. I was looking at um, Isaiah 43, 2, and then verse 10. And in that passage, it talks about the Lord will save his people. That's on the good news. Testament and the um, um, another version of the English Standard Version commentary of the English Standard Version in the message ver 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 in the message Bible the topic talks about when you're between a rock and a hard spot so in both of those in this one scripture they gave two different descriptions of how we got to look at it one they said the Lord will save his people and the other says that when you're in between a rock and a hard spot. So when you're in between a rock and a hard spot, God is telling you, I will save you. Amen. And in verse 43 and 2 and 10, it says, when thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. That has to be encouraging. That has to be an example that we have to hold on to. In verse 10 it says, 
Ye are my witness, said the Lord, and my servant who I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there are no gods formed, neither shall there be after me. Trust God. He has your back. It's very difficult to trust in, the ma in challenging moments. But God is saying, trust me. When you go through the waters, it will not go over your head. Amen. When you go through the fire, you will not get burned. Because I got your back. God is, as I say, giving us the appetizer before he gives us the dinner. Because we need to understand just how much God loves us. All the sacrifice he made for us. We tend to forget when we're going through certain things. But God has given a brief description of how he's by our side. It says there, there's many things we can focus on in scripture. One is the victory over enemies. It's a very little thing with God, the creator, the universe, the savior of man. No matter how big or how small our problems is, God cares. Amen. He cares, y'all. Whether sometimes we see it or not, he cares. He cares about us to a high level. God is calling us to, recover, to recognize the divine authority that he has given us by heaven for us to exalt on earth. He wants us to be happy here too. Amen. Yeah, that's good. We always talk about what it's going to be like when we get to heaven. Yeah. Right. But why come heaven can't be on earth? Yeah. Why come we can't exalt, exalt, exhort God the way we would think we will in heaven right now? Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. That's a call on our lives yeah. 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 to exalt Him right now. Yeah. Because ain't nobody thinking about when we get to heaven, we're going to have all these circumstances. Amen. We're going to have all these trials. Yeah. We're saying they're going away. Yeah. Right. They're left. We don't have that any, those issues anymore. But I don't have to have them here either. Right. If I trust right. in the Lord. Yeah. Right. I, I refer back to one of my favorite movies, Rocky. <laughs> And I just thought about this morning. I said, Sylvester Stallone was a bad boy. He came out of Rocky and Rambo. And he had plenty of series of it. But I thought about the time when Apollo was fighting the Russian. And everybody wanted Rocky to throw in the top. But Rocky looked at Apollo and Apollo mumbled no. So he gave Apollo what he desired. And by him giving Apollo what he desired, he did not throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. Now the situation didn't turn out the way that we would want it to turn out because Apollo died in the movie. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that stands out to me is Apollo had a desire and Rocky knew it. And he wanted him to fulfill his desire mm -hmm. even though he knew the circumstances of what might happen. Sometimes we may know the circumstances of what might happen, but we still have to fulfill the desire help us, help us now. that God puts before us. And then when we go further on down the line, when we got to Creed, they had the same scenario, but a different outcome. Because now the Russian was going through the trial. And his father had to sit on the side and wonder if he was going to throw in the towel. But what his father did, he recognized why they was doing what they was doing. And they was doing it to satisfy his ex-wife. So when she left, he realized how much power he was putting in man. Yes. And not God. So I can imagine as a father when he stood up there and he held that towel while he was doing it. Because the spirit down on the inside of him knew what happened to Apollo because he created that. But he learned from what happened to Apollo that he should throw in the towel. 
Rocky was haunted for years, as we saw through the movies, for not throwing in the towel. Mm -hmm. Because of what he felt in his spirit. Uh -huh. Because sometimes we allow people desire to overram the spirit that's already speaking to us on somebody else's behalf. We got to move in the spirit and not our fleshly thought process. So Rocky was haunted because he didn't do it. But the father was not. And even at the end of the movie, they just you just saw how the son really didn't understand. But the father kept sharing, I love you. Showing love to the end to where they just hugged. That's the example that God is trying to show us today. Even though you going and you want to really fight, I got your best interest. I need for you to be obedient to what I got for you. And at the end, you going to know that I love you. That I love you. That's why he had me read Isaiah 43 and 2 first. Because we need to know when we go through the waters, yeah. even though it may seem like it's going to be over our head, yes. Yes. when we go through the fire, even though you know when you're in the fire you're going to get burnt, he got us. My God. He got us through all circumstances and situations. Mm. It ain't nothing in the world that God can't do. What we see is big, he sees little. Yes, Lord. That's right. Even in the world. <laughs> so while miracles are very small things to God, watching after our relationship with him in a daily basis is a big thing. We got to build a relationship with him. Yes, see, Lord. sometimes we fall short because we don't have the relationship that we should have with yes. him. Yes. 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 It is the most important thing in our lives. And that's what our lives should be about. The root of success or the root of defeat is all a root. And it's all a thought process, a mindset, how we approach certain things. Yeah. Rocky is such an awesome movie because it shows you how you have to go deeper to get what you want. You just can't do the average. Because in each movie of Rocky, when he did the average, what did he do? He lost. But when he did more, he won. Yes, yes. God is requiring us to do more today. He's requiring. He's requiring us to be obedient to what he's telling us. He's putting out a demand on our lives. Fill me up till I overflow. You got to want to be filled up. And as I said before, not halfway, not just to the brim to where when you walk it, you know, you want it to overflow. Yes, Lord. This might be the only time you don't care about your flow getting wet. <laughs> because you know it's going to fertile ground. Yes, God. A overflow. A overflow. A overflow. Claim your victory today. Proverbs 4 and 23 literally says that above all keeping, keep your heart, the internal sanctuary of one's relationship with God for whom it flows from the spring of life. We got to keep it. Keep God close to your heart. Don't let your heart lead you in a direction that you know is the wrong area for you to go to. Let God be God. Claim your victory and see what God can do. 2 Kings 13, 14 through 19. I heard that scripture from you reading back there, Brother Shelton. The Lord is our life. Yes. yes whom sir. shall I fear? Amen. And he is my strength. Whom should I be afraid? In verse 14, it says, in the NIV, it says, Now Elijah had been suffering from an illness mm -hmm. from which he, di he died. Jo Joash, king of Israel, went down to see him and went over him. My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. Joash cried for the life of Elijah. Why 
Why did he cry for the life of Elisha? Because he was really sitting in fear for what was going to happen to him. He held Elijah to a high standard to where he just felt like if he died, it's over for me. Mm -hmm. I need him here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many of us feel like we need somebody here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is certain people that help us as we go through this walk. Mm -hmm. But how many of us feel like we need people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to survive? Mm -hmm. God bless. So he sat around and he cried based on what he was feeling. And when we go back a little bit in 2 Kings 2 and 12, we see where Elijah did the same thing with Elijah. It was a process of passing the book, passing the mantle. It's going to come a time where you're going to have to pass the mantle. And when you get past the mantle, you got to hold your own. Mm -hmm. We looked at the Olympics and Felix, what's, what's her name? Allison. 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 Allison Felix. When she they had the interview of them winning the four by four, she said, each one of us is not a master of this race. Mm -hmm. But God gave them each a capability to run the race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all came from different things to make them be strong in that race. Mm -hmm. But neither one of them felt like they was the master of the race. Mm -hmm. She won 11 gold medals. Mm -hmm. And she said, I was never the fastest. I was never the one breaking records like that. But when I watched her run that race, while she was running that race, all they were saying is, look at her determination. Mm -hmm. Look how she fighting. Look how she pushing. Mm -hmm. She's had something down on the inside of her mm -hmm. running that day. <laughs> Because she had never ran that time all year. And she ran faster than she ever ran in that one race. Because she was determined. She was determined to finish strong. I bet her desires was to win a medal. But if she would have finished strong, she would have been just as satisfied. Because she understood her purpose. She understood her assignment. Mm -hmm. And that's why she is the person who she is now. The person with the most Olympic medals in track and field. Mm -hmm. So to God be the glory, when we look at people like that, mm -hmm. look at yourself. Mm -hmm. How can I be determined? Mm -hmm. How can I be motivated? How can I, do How can I push to my maximum potential? Right. Right. What do I need to do to strive a little higher? Mm -hmm. How can I get there? Yes, it's going to be a challenge. Yes, it was a challenge for her. But she did. She did. And she not only did it once, she came back and ran again. And did her best again. I kept saying while I was running, watching her run, I hope she run the same way that she ran the other. But it was on the inside of her. It was something down on the inside that made her do what she did. What's down on the inside that you need to tap into to make you get to where you need to get to? What type of thing down on the inside you need to get you to motivate you yeah. Yeah. to be the best you that yeah. you can be? Yeah, that's good. So Jehoshaphat had to go through this process to seek out the Elijah while he was on his deathbed. But he had a misunderstanding of what was actually going to happen because Elijah, being the prophet, had a word for him. So we read in verse 12, I mean in verse 15, it says, Elijah said, get a bow. And some arrows. And he did so. Take the bow in your hand. He said to the king of Israel. When he had taken it. Elijah put his hand. On the king's hand. Why. Did he have to put his hand. On the king's hand. Because it had to be a transfer. Of power. He wanted him to see. That God is with him. By placing his hand on his back or on his hand, it had to show that God is with you. So today, just imagine whatever you're going through, God is placing his hand on that situation. And he's letting you know that I got you. I got you. So 
So Jehoshaphat being a person that he was, because he didn't feel like he was worthy of the whole calling because of his lifestyle. Some of us know about that. Because of our lifestyle, we think that God ain't with us no more. Because of some things that we did, we think that God gonna desert us. God is never gonna leave you. Glory. Nor forsake you. No matter what you have did or went through. That sometimes is something hard for us to believe. But a lot of us in here got a testimony. And our testimony will clarify to you. God will save even those who feel like they don't want to be saved. God will deliver even when we feel like he ain't nowhere to be found. He's going to show up right on time. But you got to let God be God. So we know just as Joseph had did in a time of trouble, who do we see? Somebody we know gonna pray for us. Ask a trainer. Somebody we know gonna deliver us. <laughs> Somebody we know got a word and it's gonna see God gonna listen to. We seek after those people. Yep. In a time of trouble. Yes. God is telling you, it ain't nothing wrong with that. I may give him some instructions, but I need you to trust me. I need you to trust me. So in the midst of that story where he told him to get his arrows and shoot it, put his hand on his hand, because we know when you, you know, when you shoot something, you don't know what you're doing, you look nervous. You look, you look, you look concerned that this don't really work. So he had to just lay his hand on his hand so he can tell me, I support you in this matter. Mm -hmm. You know how we didn't lay our hands on somebody else? Mm -hmm. Let them know that we support you in this matter. Mm -hmm. We've all done that. Mm -hmm. With our kids, mm -hmm. with our family, with a friend, mm -hmm. with somebody we don't know. Lay our hands on their hands just to show that you are supporting. Yeah, that's right. That was Elijah's job. That was his assignment. Mm -hmm. Joyce had recognized that God had used Elijah mightily in Israel, therefore he wept for the loss. In verse 16 and 16, 15 and 16, as we said, it says, God handed King Joyce the opportunity of a lifetime. Some of us are being here given the opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I forgot, let me go back to my title. I, I, Instructions are meant to be followed. Instructions are meant to be followed. And the one thing about instructions is when you miss instructions, you know what else you miss? Opportunities. That's good. When you miss instructions, you miss opportunities. When God gives you instructions and you don't follow it, you're missing an opportunity. If God told you to do something, you need to do it because you're missing an opportunity. Don't miss your opportunities. When that door open, you better be ready to run in. Don't be standing at the door when it is open, then you want to look in and see who in there first. <laughs> Y'all know how we do. Knock on the door. You want to see? Oh, okay. Oh, is that just in there? Oh. <laughs> Waiting on somebody else to help you with your opportunity. Oh, my God. Yeah. You can't wait on somebody else to give you, help you with your opportunity. That's right. <laughs> because if I knock on the door and see somebody else in there, that means they be seeking out their opportunity. That's right. So if they seeking out their opportunity, do you think they're going to stop what they're doing for them and help you? See, that's the thing that we don't really understand. <laughs> see, when it comes to me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. So that means if you ain't in my house, then it's going to be hard for me to direct you and leave my house alone. Yeah. I ain't leaving my house. Yeah. My house is going to be taken care of. That's right. 
So stop trying to get somebody else to help you with your That's opportunity. So good, Pastor. All right. That's real good. Yeah. Your opportunity is your opportunity. Yeah. Jehoshaphat was looking for Elijah to help him in his opportunity. And Elijah was giving him the instructions of what you need to do. Open the window, shoot the boat, and watch God work. That's right. That's right. So we're going to get a little bit deeper in this because Jehoshaphat being the man that he is, always causing some form of confusion in his thought process of who he is. Because he was already confused because basically his whole family going up down the line, they was all confused. They all had their own problems of, with being a king. So I'm believing in, you know how we say sometimes the things that we born into is what we got to be. We tend to think that that's the main thing. We can't avoid those things. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you right now, don't let your family history yes. affect your future. Yeah. Because you don't have to be what your family was. Yeah. If they were students and hold on, you don't have to be that. Right. If they were crooked, that, you don't have to do that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Change the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You be different. Yeah. You take the opportunity. Yeah. You make this thing successful. Yeah. What you don't see and you don't like, it changed the perspective. Yeah. That's why God gave you the opportunity to be the director. Yeah. Yeah. See, he didn't tell us he just wanted us to be an actor. Uh -huh. He said, I want you to be the director yeah. of what you got before you. You are the director. God has given us an opportunity. King Joab's went over to Elijah and basically on his deathbed and started crying because he didn't know that he had the power. He didn't even know that he had the power already. He already had the power. But Elijah tried to help him. And let's go ahead and let me go to verse 17. In verse 17 it says, Open the east window, he said, and he opened it. Shoot, Elijah said, and he shot. The Lord's arrow to vi of victory. The arrows of victory over Aram. Elijah declared, you will completely destroy the Amorites and the Amorites. You will completely destroy them if you shoot the arrow. So he shot the arrow, mm -hmm. saw the success. But how many of us shoot the arrow, see the success, but still turn the other way? Mm -hmm. He saw the success, but he still wasn't convinced. How much do God got to do to convince you? <laughs> to be the person that you know that he's told you that you're going to be. Let me just always, you know, you always use yourself. How much did, Robert, how much did he have to teach you for you to understand that you had to turn the other way? I would probably say a whole lot. But it came a time. That's why I like listening to 91.5 because the whole thing is, is turning point. We all going to reach that turning point. That time in our lives when something is going to affect us and we're going to say, I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. What is it going to take for you to say to yourself, I need to do something different? Mm -hmm. How far down would God have to dig into you for you to say, I need to do something different? When we talk about Jaws, he lost opportunity. Because he didn't listen. He didn't focus. God works begin. I mean, God works things out in the spirit before he reveals them in the physical. Yeah, uh -huh. Amen. So what Jehoshaphat, wasn't, what he wasn't really thinking about was the spirit. He was trying to work things out in the flesh. We work things out all the time in the flesh. But we forget about the spirit. We got to be led by the spirit. 
Not by our fleshly eyes that see things the way that they want to see it. Not by our fleshly skin that see things, that feel things the way that we want to feel it. The spirit. So he was told, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to start telling the story instead of reading the story. He was told to shoot the arrows. And when you shoot these arrows, you will claim victory over Sariah. And when you claim victory over that, then you will conquer it all. So he had some arrows in his book pack, his, his, whatever, his pouch. Mm -hmm. So he started shooting. One, two, 